I've been a videographer at Bike Radar for a little over five years now, and in the last episode of Bike Radar Diaries, I announced I was leaving. In the last five years though, I've ridden a lot of bikes, a lot of kit, some great, some not so great. So I've put together a little list of the five best things I have used in my five years at Bike Radar. A few years ago, I, much like a lot of the cycling world, caught the gravel bug. Back in 2016, I did my first gravel race, which also was coincidentally the world's biggest gravel race, and that is the Dirty Kanza. Possibly stupidly, it was a bit of a jumping at the deep end move, but that's the kind of rider that I am. It was quite an experience, and I rode it on a really nice titanium Moots Route 45. Since then, I've ridden a few other gravel bikes, but last year I decided to treat myself to a frame that was really rather special, and that was Open's Upper. So full disclaimer, I did buy this bike with my own money, so I could be a little bit biased, but I'd like to think what I've done on the bike goes to show just how great a frame it is. As nice as titanium and high quality steel are, my heart beats for boutique carbon frames. I've decided stiff, lightweight chassis really suit my riding and changing the wheels and the tyres are where I like to tweak the characteristics of a ride. And with the upper, big tyre clearance means a lot of versatility. Now I'm kind of speaking generally here, even though it's in the context of the upper, because there are lots of frames similar to the open that have the same, if not greater, tyre clearance. Throughout 2018, I rode 2.1 inch 650B Schwalbe Racing Ralphs and really big, really nice tyre. They roll really well, especially on gravel, as, as you'd hope. And for the rougher road riding I did, for instance, the Paris-Roubaix Challenge that I did with Jack, I rode WTB Horizons in a 47, again, 650B. Since then, I've run various different road setups, 25 mil all the way up to around 32. So quite a good range of tires, but in the heart of the bike, you have that really stiff frame and it feels absolutely brilliant. Currently, I'm running 40 mil 700T Maxxis Ramblers, and that kind of goes back to a video I did a couple of months ago about gravel tire width versus tread. Now, if you'd like to see that, there is a link to that video in the video description. I'm also running MCFK's 25s carbon wheels and overall the bike in this gravel setup weighs a smidge over seven and a half kilos. So that just goes to show just how light you can make this bike. In road setups you're looking comfortably under seven kilos. So in that gravel setup that is astonishingly light for a bike that I would willingly throw down some single track descents on races such as Duke's Weekender or Grand Duro. Last year the Open took me to three podiums and I'm fully expecting this year to get nowhere near that as races get more popular and the competition gets harder. Following the off-road trend, my second pick is the most comfortable pair of mountain bike shoes I've ever worn and that is Shimano's S-Fire XC9s. I've had these shoes going on 18 months now and I've raced mountain bikes, gravel, they've been my commuter shoes and Actually, they're the shoes that I go back to when I'm just doing general riding because they are far and away more comfortable than the road shoes that I have. Yes, there are issues like non-replaceable tread and in my shoes, not the ones in these photos. It is becoming a little bit of a concern, but 18 months of use, they do still have a fair amount of life left in them. I'm not too worried just yet. Regardless of that, the comfort of these shoes actually far outweigh the tread issue for me. And they might not fit your feet as well as they do fit mine. And you might not need shoes as stiff as these are. However, in my opinion, these shoes are absolutely top draw. Since I started riding seven, eight years ago, I've only ever had three pairs of cycling sunglasses. I started off some generic non-brand options that have long since been lost. After that, I had some Uvex sunglasses and I used those for about a year. However, after that, I kind of got suckered into the hype when Oakley released their Jawbreakers. The Jawbreakers were made famous by the likes of Mark Cavendish and a whole bunch of other riders when they first got released. But since I bought some, I haven't looked at another pair of sunglasses since. 
They give a really nice wide field of vision. There's no obstructions on the side. They're very comfortable, even in scorching hot weather. I can still wear them, there's no slip. And I kind of like to think they do actually suit me. And also might be a bit triggering for some of you. I think they kind of suit bearded riders a little bit better because of how chunky they are. The only problem with these sunglasses are the replaceable lenses aren't cheap. They're about £75 retail. I haven't had the need to replace mine yet. I probably could at this point, but because they were quite expensive initially, I'm gonna drag that out for a little bit longer. When it comes to saddles, there's only one option for me, and that's Specialized Power Pro. I discovered this saddle back in 2016 as I was preparing for a Land's End to John O'Groats ride. It was kind of a risk changing saddles just weeks before a thousand mile ride, but I completed that thousand miles with zero discomfort and zero saddle sores. So I knew that this was the saddle for me. Since then, I've bought two more and it is the only saddle I use for general riding. My favorite option is the middle of the range, the Pro. So you do have a cheaper option and you do have a more expensive option, which is the S-Works and that's carbon rails, which I have ridden, but I found it was just a little bit too stiff for me. The only issue I've had with the saddle was back in 2017 during the Jeroboam 300, when for no explicable reason, I had a very awkward, very slow speed crash. The saddle hit the ground and well, it kind of tapped the ground really and the saddle pops off the rails. Okay. Uh. I don't even understand how it works. I thought it just slipped quite awkwardly at very low speeds and that happened. I still have that saddle and this is here. See? So if anyone can tell me how to fix this, because I've tried many different methods and I still cannot get that back in there while the end bits are in there, that'd be much appreciated. My final pick isn't a bit of kit, it's not a bit of tech, but it is actually, in fact, hill climb season. Fucking good! Without a doubt, hill climb season is the best thing I've been involved with. I've been in a very fortunate position to ride some really nice kit for it, especially last year. However, to get the most out of hill climb season, you don't need to ride a sub 5.5 kilo bike because Hill climb season is definitely all about the experience. I first dipped my toe into hill climbs four or five years ago at the Beck CC hill climb. However, since then, kind of culminated into the last two years where I've fully committed to training and racing very hard. But there are a few specific reasons why I think hill climb season is worthy of this list. It's an incredibly accessible form of racing. Effectively, it's local clubs putting on events. They can range from 20 riders up to 150 riders and even more at the nationals. And whether you're there just to take part or go for the win, it's always actually nice to be able to compare yourself to some of the best riders in the country. But ultimately, that doesn't matter because these are time trials and time trials are all about beating your own personal bests. And despite you know, the pain, the suffering and the agony that the media likes to portray hill climb season as, it's a very, very friendly atmosphere at the races. Because it's kind of like collective suffering, everyone's there to cheer each other on. And through this suffering comes my third point about why hill climb season is so great. And that is because it gets you in really, really good shape. However, the downside to being in such good shape for those two months of the year is the rest of the year, you're almost chasing those power targets that you knew you once had. So that's the roundup of my five favorite things I've used and done during my time here at Bike Radar. Thanks for your continued enjoyment of our content. And as always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, but more importantly, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.